Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and we're taking a look today at a rather unique smartphone. This is called the Unihertz Atom. It is probably one of the smallest smartphones you will ever see, but it's got most of the modern accoutrements you've come to expect from a modern smartphone. It's running Android 8.1. It's got a decent amount of RAM and storage, and it's not all that expensive at around $260. And we're going to be taking a closer look at this little phone in just a second. But I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that I paid for this with my own funds. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this little phone is all about. So let's take a closer look now at the hardware. This is a tiny little phone, as I mentioned, and you can see it here uh, stacked on top of my iPhone 10. So you can imagine that some of those larger Android phones will certainly tower over this little guy. It kind of reminds me of a few phones that I've used in the past, uh, namely my all-time favorite flip phone, which was called the Motorola Vader. It almost feels exactly in my hand the same way that old Motorola phone did. Uh, the other one is a bunch of Nextel phones I used to use in my day job many years ago uh, that were ruggedized and really solid feeling. This has that same feel and they even have a push to talk button if you want to subscribe to the Zello service. I didn't try that out because I have nobody to talk to on it, but uh, you have that option to do some push to talk and it might work well in uh, commercial environments where you might need that. Now the phone is IP68 rated, which means that it is water and dust resistant. So it can survive, for example, getting dropped into a bucket or a snowbank or something for a short period of time, but it's not designed to be an underwater phone. So just bear that in mind. Uh, inside, it's got a Cortex A53 processor. It's the MT6763 chipset. Uh, Octa-core, 2 gigahertz in clock speed. 4 gigs of RAM, which might be overkill given the tiny little screen on this guy. And 64 gigs of RAM. And again, the price point is $259. The display is IPS, and as you can see, it is very tiny with some pretty big bezels. Uh, 2.45 inches and it's 240 by 432 in resolution. So this is not going to knock your socks off in image quality. Uh, the display though is relatively functional, although it's sometimes hard to get exactly what you're looking to type in here. So for example, I'm going to type out the uh, NASA homepage here, and provided you're very precise with your finger, you can generally type out what you're looking for, uh, but it is going to sometimes register the wrong key. So I think for a lot of text input, you'll probably want to talk to the phone and have Google do the uh, voice to text for you. But generally, it seems to be working pretty well. I was surprised by how well the Android apps actually run on a screen this small. So we're browsing the web here without an issue. Uh, we can go back to the home page here and maybe uh, load up Plex or something and get a feel for uh, media on this as well. So I haven't found many of the apps that I typically use not working that well on here. They all seem to be pretty functional. I can uh, click on this to start up a movie again, for example, and uh, stream it over my Wi-Fi. And it seems to be actually working like you would expect one of these little smartphones to work. Even uh, YouTube was a pretty nice experience on this little tiny screen. So if you're looking for kind of like a supplementary phone and thinking, I'd like something smaller for those times where I don't want to risk my smartphone uh, out on a hike or something like that, but you still want access to some of these things. Uh, the fact is all these apps work and they get shrink, you know, shrunken down into these uh, little windows here, but they do seem to work pretty well. The sound quality out of the speakers is tinny as you might expect, but uh, you can hear it. It's nice and loud and most of the apps work like they do on larger, higher resolution screens. Now we did test battery life on this and it feels about the same as other uh, low to mid-range smartphones we have tested. So you could probably get a day or so out of it depending on what you're doing and how far you are from the cell towers, for example. I was surprised that it supports a number of carriers here in the US, uh, including Verizon Wireless, which is something that we don't typically see uh, some of these lower end smartphones supporting. So you can do Verizon here in the US, AT&T and T-Mobile. It does not though work with Sprint, so just keep that in mind, but it did work great on Verizon. I was able to get my LTE service going on it. Uh, you do have to make sure you're plugging in an already activated SIM card on Verizon because this device will not activate a SIM card for you, but otherwise uh, it was working fine with my existing service. I also tested it with an AT&T SIM card and that worked. You can install two SIM cards in here. They are micro SIMs and you can switch between them or assign one SIM card to voice. 
uh, the other one to data if you wish. So you have all that flexibility you might have seen on other uh, two SIM devices that are out there. Uh, voice quality when you're actually on the phone uh, wasn't great. The speaker sounded fine when I called my wife on it, but she said I sounded a little bit muffled when I was talking to her. So you might want to look at uh, plugging in a headset or getting a Bluetooth headset. Now this has two cameras on board, one on the front and one on the back. Uh, the rear camera is the better of the two. It's a 16 megapixel camera with a flash. Uh, it's not a spectacular camera though. It will take decently sharp photos, but it doesn't have any stabilization. So if you're in lower light, uh, that will result usually in a blurrier photo. It'll do video at 1080p at 30 frames per second. But again, that lack of a stabilizer makes it really difficult to do any kind of moving shots here. So it's not going to compete at all with a higher end smartphone with a nicer camera. Uh, the camera on the front is eight megapixels, not spectacular, but good enough to do a selfie every once in a while or uh, do a video conference or something like that. Uh, next to it, you can see the little message indicator light flashing there. We have a notification waiting that uh, we will see when we turn it back on. It does have a fingerprint sensor, which is kind of neat to see on a little device like this. So you can see when I uh, just turned it back on, that fingerprint uh, was recognized and allowed us to unlock the phone. So that, that's been working pretty nicely most of the time, except when it's on camera, apparently. Let me get a better angle on that. There we go. Uh, but I have found the fingerprint sensor to work uh, fairly well as I've been playing with the phone here. Uh, you have your usual uh, back and uh, multitasking buttons here on the device, and you can also use that fingerprint sensor as a home button. You'll get a little bit of haptic feedback when you push it in like other Android phones. Uh, there's that SIM tray I mentioned, volume up and down over here. And then on the other side, you have the power switch and the push to talk button. And then it charges via USB type C. Uh, and I tried out a bunch of different devices to see if we could get maybe video coming out of this. Unfortunately, you cannot get uh, video out through the USB-C, but it does support card readers. It even works with uh, keyboards and mice too. So I've got my uh, little USB dongle here with a Logitech uh, thing plugged into it. So if we pop that into the side of the phone here and I start using the mouse on my device, you can actually see the mouse pointer moving on the little tiny phone here using this USB-C hub. So I think you could probably plug in uh, some basic devices like game controllers and keyboards and mice and that sort of thing, but do not expect uh, to be able to get video out from the phone, which is unfortunate because that might have extended its usability a little bit if you could plug it in maybe to a larger display when you needed to do something else. And it has a traditional headphone jack here at the top for plugging in a headset or just headphones, so that was nice to see on there. And overall, a pretty nicely put together package. Uh, weight on it is about 108 grams or three and a half ounces, so pretty lightweight also, but it does feel pretty solid. Let's take a look now at some gaming. Now, gaming on this little phone is going to be a challenge given the small screen size and how your fingers will be taking up most of the screen to try to control the game. Uh, but nonetheless, the frame rate here is pretty good, even on something like Goat Simulator here, which is a 3D open world game. I think some of the performance we're seeing here is due in part to the low resolution display. Uh, this processor is not uh, super powerful, but on a little low resolution display, it doesn't have to work as hard to render the scene. So it's really uh, running quite nicely, actually. It's just really difficult to control. So I think you'll have a decent time playing most of the casual games you'll find in the Google Play Store. Uh, just know, though, that controlling those games is going to be a bit challenging. And on the 3D Mark Slingshot benchmark test, we got a score of 674. Uh, that puts it right around where we saw the Amazon Fire HD 10 tablet come in a few months back. Uh, you can also see it stacked up against a few other smartphones we've looked at in the recent past, including the Honor 8 and the Moto X4. Uh, so it's not going to be a super fast performer, but because you have this little screen here, I don't think it needs to be. And again, I was pretty pleased with the overall gaming uh, performance we saw out of it. So overall, I am quite pleased with this little phone, more so than I expected to be. Uh, what surprised me the most was how all of the apps seemed to work fine on here. They shrink themselves down to this very small, very low resolution display quite well. So nothing's getting cut off on it. Uh, you can get access to all of the features that uh, the app provides without any real compromises here beyond just the tiny screen and some of the text input difficulties that I mentioned a bit earlier. Uh, but generally, it is quite usable, especially as a supplement to your daily driver phone. So again, if you're going out hiking or someplace where you're concerned about 
bringing your $1,200 smartphone. Uh, you can bring this little rugged device that might be a little more waterproof than your phone might be. In fact, you can even run a strap here through the bottom and attach it to your backpack and you'll be able to make calls on it but you'll also be able to run all of your apps too. And again, that was the thing that really surprised me that you can actually get usable apps on something this small. Uh, back about 20 years ago, the trend was to try to get these phones smaller and smaller. Uh, that little Vader phone was probably the smallest phone that you could get at the time, or at least competitive with the smallest phones out there. And then as the smartphones came out, they got bigger and bigger again. So I went from that little Vader phone to a Palm Treo and it was a much larger phone, but I liked having the functionality of the Treo, and now it looks like you might be able to get some decent functionality in a very tiny little device. So good stuff all around, decent compa uh, compatibility with many carriers. Uh, so again, if you're looking for a supplementary phone, uh, this might be a fun little supplement to have. Until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Chris Allegretta, the Four Guys with Quarters podcast, Tom Albrecht, Anuj Zaveri, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.